Today on Amazing Dinosaurs, we are checking out all of my Jurassic World figures that were released in 2023. There's over 50 figures in here. There's Dino Trackers, there's Legacy Collection, and a whole lot more. This is the new Dino Trackers camouflage and battle Indominus Rex figure. It is fully posable and it has this awesome attack action. And its neck even glows green. You can kind of see it right now. This is the 93 classic real feel T-Rex figure. It's made to look just like the old one. And it even has a stomach compartment so you can feed it smaller dinosaurs all the way down to its stomach. Here is the gigantic Trackers Spinosaurus figure. It has some really cool coloring. It's got the backpack on its shoulders and it has two action buttons. One swings the tail up and down and the other swings the tail side to side. Here is the track and attack Endoraptor figure with the reflective blue coloring and multiple attack buttons. Up next, I've got the Habitat Defender Triceratops, and this is one of the largest Triceratops I have in my entire collection. Up next is one of my favorite T-Rex figures. This is the new Hunt and Chomp Tyrannosaurus Rex. Like all of the Dino Tracker series, it comes with this Dino Tracker piece, and I love the coloring, plus there's a really cool attack action. a double chomping action. This is the Legacy Collection Tyrannosaurus Rex in the green coloring, and it has the button at the top of its head for the chomping action. This figure is the Epic Attack Carnotaurus figure. With this figure, you can use the tail to control the head and the jaw, but there's also these buttons here on the side that you can press for more sound effects and lights. Here's another gigantic Tracker series figure. This is the Elasmosaurus. It's an aquatic dinosaur and it has two action buttons on its back. One swings its head side to side and the other chomps its head up and down. And let's not forget this huge, super colossal Endoraptor figure. This is one of my favorite super colossal figures out of all the ones that I have. This crazy dinosaur is called the Bestaheversaur, and it's from the Dino Tracker series. It's got the backpack and the headpiece and two action buttons on its back. One activates the jaw chomping action, and the other button moves its spine on its tail. I've also got the smaller Sound Surge Indominus Rex figure right here. It's got some sound effects that come with it. And also the Hammond Collection Carithosaurus figure. This figure is super poseable and it has some pretty cool coloring. Next, this Jeep came as part of a set. It's got some really cool classic looking coloring and it came with this dinosaur, which I believe is called a Scudosaurus. Now the Jeep has fully openable doors. It has a windshield protector right here to protect against the dinosaurs. And it's got this really cool turret on top too. And the dino is a brightly colored one. It's got this bright orange with the dark blue on the sides and on its face too. This figure right here is the Diabloceratops and it looks pretty evil. It's got these massive horns on its head and then way up at the top of its frill. And it also has an action button to activate the sound effects and the movement. Here's a slightly similar looking dinosaur. This one is called a Regalaceratops. And this one has the bright yellow coloring with the purple and green coloring on its body. It's interesting that it's got some spikes right there on its back. And this one too has the action button on its back for the sound effects. Next up is the Search and Smash truck set. It comes with this really cool gray and blue Jeep. You can see there's a figure on the inside there. And it also comes with this really cool looking Atrociraptor figure. And best of all, this hood is actually built so that the Atrociraptor can smash down and look like it breaks it. This next figure is an herbivore figure. This is the Nigersaurus, and it has the dark green in the back and the light green in the front with the action button that moves its neck. Here is the Dino Trackers EO Carcaria figure. It's got the feather textured body all over and the action button on its back for the sound effects and chomping. This one's another Hammond Collection figure. This is the Ankylosaurus figure, and this is one of my largest Ankylosauruses. It's got the armored plating and the spikes all over its back and a very poseable tail, which is a nice feature. All right, another Hammond Collection figure, but this one is the Concavenator figure. It's got some crazy coloring with the blue, orange, and brown. It's got these crazy spikes on its back. 
and overall is just a really interesting looking figure. This is the Sino Tyrannus figure. It looks pretty close to a T-Rex figure, except that it's got this crazy crown on its head. And there's two action buttons. One activates its chomping action, and the other activates its tail swinging action. Here is the Hammond Collection Irritator figure. It's got the mostly gray body with the lighter underbelly and the yellow striping and a really long and narrow face. Up next is the Wild Roar Orco Raptor figure. Now this figure has feather texturing on its belly, but the normal skin texturing on its top. It's got some massive claws and the action button on its back for these sound effects and chomping. <laughs> Here is another Irritator figure, but this one is from the Dino Tracker series, and specifically is part of the Wild Roar pack. It's got some really cool coloring and design, and the button on its back for the roar sound effects. Next up is this awesome looking Jurassic Park Jeep, and on the inside is Dr. Ellie Sattler. And this Jeep is from the Risky Rescue Pack. Here's another Dino Trackers figure. This is the Chronosaurus, and is another aquatic dinosaur, and it has the action button on its back for the sound effects. <laughs> This is the Dryptosaurus figure from the Dino Tracker series. Has pretty dark coloring other than that bright blue right on its face. And it has the action button on its back for the chomping and sound effects. Next up from the Hammond collection is a Metriocanthosaurus figure. It's got some really cool striping on its tail and on its side, and some pretty good detailing along its face too. Here is the Epic Attack Dilophosaurus figure in the green coloring with the yellow and red frills. And it has this button on the side for the sound effects and the lights. I've got a few more Dilophosaurus figures in here too. This one is a smaller figure, but check this out. The frill is actually removable, so you can have the dinosaur without the frill showing at all. Next up is the Austroraptor figure. This is from the Dino Tracker series, and it looks quite a bit like a raptor with its body size, although its face is a lot more narrower and longer. Here is a baby Brachiosaurus figure. I have other figures of this baby Brachiosaurus, but this is the first time that it comes in this brown coloring with the tan detailing. This is the Elaphrosaurus figure from the Dino Tracker series. It has the bright blue and yellow coloring on its body and some really cool spikes at the top of its head. This crazy looking figure is called the Nothosaurus. It stands on all four legs. It has this long snout and a pretty flat head. That's pretty weird looking. Here is the Piat Nitskisaurus figure. It has some crazy dark blue green coloring, some green, some red, and some orange on its face. This is the Soundstrike Geniodectes Cirrus figure. Comes in the brown coloring with the yellow on the tail, the belly, and on the face. Plus it has an action button for the chomping. And here is the newest edition of the Zunaceratops. They had older figures with different coloring, but this one that came out in 2023 is the brown with the tan and the darker brown. Plus it has an action button on its back for this head ramming action. Up next is the new Herrerasaurus figure. It looks very different compared to the old Herrerasauruses, and it has a button on its back for the chomping action. Here is the Edophosaurus figure. It looks quite a bit like a Dimetrodon figure with a huge spine on its back and standing on four legs, but I think this spine is even larger. Next up is the Prestosuchus figure. This one is also walking on all four legs. It has the dark green with a little bit of lighter green coloring and then the brown on its face. Plus there's an action button for chomping and opening its mouth. Oh, check that out. I've got another Geniodectes Cirrus figure in here. This is the Gigant Spinosaurus figure. It looks kind of like a Stegosaurus, but it has these huge spikes coming out of its shoulder right there. And it's actually spring-loaded so that when you move the head, the tail moves back and forth too. This is the Strike Attack Dilophosaurus figure. I think this is one of the few Dilophosauruses that come in only this white and gray coloring. Plus, when you move the tail up, it actually activates the frills for attack mode. And then here is the Strike Attack Atrociraptor figure in the dark green and bright green coloring. And it has a button on its back to activate the chomping action. And I've got a few human figures in here. This is the Hammond Collection John Raymond Arnold figure, complete with the lab coat. I've also got the John Hammond figure from the Hammond Collection. And finally, the Dennis Nedry figure from the Hammond Collection too.
be thinking you haven't seen this one before, and that is because it is custom painted. It is an Irex in a camouflage green color. And check out that super bloody mouth too. Next up of my newest figures, we've got the Dino Tracker Endoraptor figure. And it features some attack slashing actions. <laughs> and an attack button on its back, too. The next new figure is this Wild Roar Eo Carcaria figure. It features the feather texturing all over its body. It's got some bright coloring along its head and a slide lever action for different chomps and sound effects. Next up of these new figures is, I believe, the Chronosaurus. This dinosaur is an aquatic dinosaur, so it has four fins. It's got these huge teeth in its mouth and a slide lever action for some roaring sound effects and chomping motions. Next up, I've got a medium-sized Sino Tyrannus figure from the Dino Tracker series. You can see this huge headpiece, and it also has two action buttons on its back. One moves its jaws, and the other swings its tail. Next up of the new figures is this epic attack Carnotaurus figure. It has the classic orange red coloring all over its body. And a special part is it's got these two action buttons for battle damage and sound effects. And not only that, but it also has a jaw jumping action. Here's an even larger figure. This is the extreme battle damage Allosaurus figure. This is the largest Allosaurus I have, and you can check out that extreme battle damage right there on its side. Plus, it also has an action button on its back for sound effects and chomping. Here's another T-Rex I bet you haven't seen before. That's because this is another custom colored one. This is a battle damage T-Rex. You can see the battle damage turned on and off on its side, and it is custom colored into the camo green. It's really cool. Next up is one that I bought just a couple weeks ago. This is a Scorpio Venator in totally new coloring. It's mostly brown and has some orange detailing running along its neck and its head. And this Scorpio Venator actually came as a pack with this Iguanodon figure. And check it out, they both have an attack button when you press down on its back. I think we all know this next one. This is the Therizinosaurus figure from Jurassic World Dominion. It features these huge claws in its hands, and you can use the tail to swing the torso back and forth, and use the button for an attack action. This dinosaur is the new Diabloceratops from the Dino Tracker series. It is the only Triceratops looking dinosaur that I have that has this bright red coloring and it's got a ginormous frill on the front of its head too. Plus there is a little button on its back for sound effects and attack movements. This next figure is a Tyrannosaurus Rex and this one I got just a week ago and it is custom colored to look way more lifelike. Plus they added a bunch more battle damage. And this is the Terran T-Rex, so it has the button on its back for the tearing action. Next, why don't we grab these huge figures way in the back. I can't even show this full one on camera, it's so big. This is the Dreadnoughtus figure, and it is probably one of the largest and longest figures that I have. Just look at the size of this thing. This is crazy. Next up in the back here is another huge one, but not quite as large. This is the Apatosaurus figure, and it too has a pretty long neck and a long tail, and you can still move its head around and open and close its mouth. I think that's a pretty cool detail for how big this figure is. All right, let's see what's next here. This is the Hammond Collection Ceratosaurus. It has the classic coloring for Ceratosauruses, and it features very poseable arms, legs, tail, neck, and of course, the mouth. Here's another Hammond Collection figure. This is the Concavenator. And this figure looks pretty wild. It's got an interesting looking spine coming out of half of its back, and it's got a huge orange tail, and of course, is extremely poseable. Let's keep going with these Hammond Collection figures. This one is the Baryonyx, and just like the others, is super poseable and features the gray coloring with the dark blue on top. This next figure is a bit smaller. This is the Strike Attack Zunoceratops. This, I think, is the second version of the Zunoceratops, and this one features the brown coloring with some tan and black. And it has an action button on its back. 
Next up is the Edophosaurus figure. This figure reminds me of a Dimetrodon because of the huge spine along its back, but I think this dinosaur spine might be even a little bit larger. And it features an action where you can move the tail to twist the head back and forth. Aww. Over here, I've got the giant Dino Tracker's Stegosaurus figure. It comes with the backpack that I have attached right here, and it has totally different coloring compared to the other Stegosaurus figures that I have. Plus, it features two buttons on its back, both to move its tail. This is the Hammond Collection Ankylosaurus figure. It is quite a bit larger than the other Ankylosaurus figures I've got and is very poseable. You can even open and close its mouth. Here is a Triceratops figure from the Jurassic World Dominion series. It's got the green body with the dark green on its head and the orange right along the front too. Over here is the Irritator Raptor. This one is super brightly colored. It has an interesting spine running down its back and on both sides of its tail. And on this figure, if you press down, you get a chomping action. Here is the Wild Roar Dryptosaurus dinosaur figure. It's got spikes all over its tail, running up its back, up to its head, and it has an action on its back that you can use for chomping actions. This weird looking dinosaur figure is the Siamosaurus. It stands on all four legs and has a dark blue body with a spine on its back, kind of like a Spinosaurus. And on this figure, the tail controls the head and the jaw. We saw one Scorpio Venator earlier that had different coloring. This was the original one. And I believe this one is from Jurassic World Dominion. It has the yellow sides with the dark blue top and the white detailing. And of course, when you press down on its back, you get a chomping action. Here is the Ampelosaurus figure in the orange coloring with the brown on top. And like many other figures, the tail controls the head and the jaw. I've also got a few Ragosaurus figures in here. I believe this one was the earlier version with the brown coloring and the dark blue. And this one is a bit more recent. It's dark blue all over its body and it has the white along its neck and its chin. This is an extremely recent one. This is the Epic Attack Dilophosaurus. This figure is a little bit larger than most of my Dilophosauruses. It has the dark green body and the attack button right here on the side. It's pretty cool that it lights up, but sadly on this figure, you cannot open or close the frills. I think that's a pretty big bummer. Here is the Austroraptor figure. You can tell it looks pretty similar to a Velociraptor, but it has a much longer and narrower snout. Aww. Speaking of raptors, here's another one. This is a Mega Raptor figure. It comes in the red and dark blue coloring, and when you press down on its body, you get a chomp action. This is the Sound Surge Irex figure. It's a lot smaller than many of my Irex figures, but it still has some pretty decent detailing and of course, the sound effects. Next up for the new figures, I've got a Nothosaurus dinosaur. This is a pretty long and short dinosaur, but it's got some gnarly teeth. Check that out. This next figure is the Elephrosaurus dinosaur in the bright blue. It's got some yellow green coloring and it features poseable arms, legs, tail, neck, and head too. Next up is the extreme damage, Geniodectes Sirius. While most of its body is this dark gray coloring, it has bright blue and red on the top of its head. And of course, the battle damage on the side. And here's another Geniodectes Sirius. This is not the battle damage edition and it has different coloring too. Plus this one has an action button to chomp its jaw. I've got quite a few more extreme damage dinosaurs. This is the Atrociraptor extreme damage version. This Atrociraptor is in the white and dark blue. And of course, check out that battle damage. The next extreme damage dinosaur, I believe is pronounced the Coelurus. It comes in dark green and dark red and the battle damage, of course. The final extreme damage that I have of my new figures is this Pyroraptor. It is in the classic red with black, and of course, there's the battle damage. I've also got a little baby Stegosaurus here, and this one is in the bright green. It's even got some gold around its eyes and the red spines. And finally for my new figures is the Rugops Primus Dinosaur. It has feather texturing all over its body, and you can pose the arms, the legs, the neck, and the jaw.
Let's get started with the largest figure. This is the Indominus Rex figure. And this figure from Dino Trackers is pretty special because it is actually a camo Indominus Rex. Check out that glowing green color in its neck and in its body. Now let's grab the next biggest dinosaur, which is this Tyrannosaurus Rex. I just bought this figure and this is the Hunt and Chomp T-Rex. It's got pretty cool, unique coloring. It's got a headpiece and a new attack feature. Now let's set it up next in size, right next to the Indominus Rex. Let's see, now next in size is probably this Endoraptor figure. This Dino Tracker's Endoraptor has a reflective blue skin coloring along with its classic gold stripe, and it has a variety of attack buttons. And let's set that up next in line, next to the T-Rex. Next, we're gonna grab this epic attack Carnotaurus figure. This Carnotaurus has the iconic clay red coloring. You can use the tail to move the head around, and there's a button to open and close its jaw. But best of all are these buttons on the side for more sound effects and lights too. That's pretty cool, so let's set him up as the next biggest dinosaur in this collection. I think it's time to open up this new Dino Trackers Habitat Defender Triceratops. Now I think this by far is the largest Triceratops I have in my entire collection. This Dino Tracker's Triceratops has mostly brown coloring, it has a lighter underbelly, and some accenting on the top of its body. It of course has some huge horns coming out of its head and a very large frill. So overall, this is really cool. And overall, it actually feels more lightweight than a lot of figures, which is interesting for how big it is. But anyways, let's put this as the next biggest dinosaur in our Dino Trackers line. Next up, we're gonna grab this Sino Tyrannus figure. This figure has a mostly dark green body, but this has some bright green and red along its face. And there's two hidden action buttons. One has a chomping action and the other button has a tail swinging action. And let's set that up next in line. Here I've got a really weird looking dinosaur. I believe this one is called the Bistaversaur, something like that. It's a pretty unique name and a very unique looking dinosaur. It's got a tan colored body and black with a little bit of red and two hidden action buttons. One moves its head up and down for chomping and the other actually activates these spines on its back. Let's get that one next in line right here. Now let's go for this huge Stegosaurus figure from the Dino Tracker series. It of course has the tracker backpack and some really cool coloring, plus two hidden action buttons on its back. The one on this side swings its tail upwards and the button on the other side here swings its tail side to side. And so let's put this one next in line right here. Next up is this Orcoraptor figure, a very strange and unique looking dinosaur. It has a dark green and black body with feather texturing on the underside of its body and a lever action on its back for some sound effects and chopping actions. So let's put that next in line. Next, let's grab this Eocarcharia dinosaur. This dinosaur has feather texturing over its entire body and is a lot more brightly colored than the Orcoraptor that we just saw. And it also has the lever on its back for chomping and sound effects. And there it is, next in line. Over here, we've got the Dryptosaurus figure. This figure has a dark brown and gray colored body with tons of spikes running from tail to head and a slide lever for the chomping action. And now let's put it next in size in line. And next up, this one isn't tall, but it certainly is quite large. This aquatic dinosaur is the Elasmosaurus. It's got a bright blue body and a super long neck and two action buttons on its back. One moves its neck up and down, and the other moves its neck side to side and opens its mouth too. That's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and set it in line. Next up, let's grab the Regaliceratops figure. This dinosaur looks pretty similar to a Triceratops. It has the large frill in the front with some horns. It's got some sound effects as you can hear. And it has a slide lever action on its back for more sound effects and movement. And let's 
put that right next to the Elasmosaurus. Over here, we've got the Diabloceratops dinosaur. This figure is bright red, and it has a light brown underbelly and a ginormous frill with some horns. And of course, it has a lever on its back for some sound effects and head movement. Here is the Nigersaurus dinosaur in the bright green and dark green coloring. It's got a super long neck and a super long tail as well, and the lever on its back for moving its head. And let's put that next in line here. Next up is this new Irritator dinosaur. This figure features quite a few different colors. It's got dark brown, light brown, some bright green and some red eyes. And it has the lever on its back for the sound effects and chomping action. So let's put that right next to the Nigersaurus. Here is the Epic Attack Dilophosaurus figure. Now it's pretty small and you can't move the frills on its head, unfortunately, but it does have this cool button on its side, the lights and a bunch of sound effects. This is a pretty cool figure, so let's put this next in line. Next in line is this new figure. I believe it's to pronounce the Piatnitskisaurus. This figure has some pretty cool dark blue coloring with some bright green striping along the top and even some orange and red along its face. It's also got quite a few spikes along the top of its face and underneath its chin as well and a tiny little spine running along its back. So let's put that right next to the Dilophosaurus. Next up is the Scutosaurus figure in the bright orange coloring with some dark blue accenting along its back and its face. And check out those interesting horns coming out of its cheeks on both sides of its face too. It's pretty cool. Set that up next in line. Now let's check out the other new figure that I've got, the Priestosuchus figure. It looks like this dinosaur walks on all four legs. It has a dark green body with some lighter accenting along its back and then a brown face. Plus, it has an action button right here on its back for a massive chomping action. Let's set that up next in line and grab our next dinosaur, which is a Zunoceratops figure. Now I have an older version of the Zunoceratops, but this one has new coloring, which is the brown, the tan, and the black and it has an action button on its back for a stabbing action with its horns. So we'll set that up there. And our last figure, although it's not very small, it's the shortest. This is a Chronosaurus figure. Now this aquatic dinosaur is dark blue on the top and tan on the underbelly. And it has a lever right on its back for some sound effects and chomping action. <laughs> And let's set that up as the final dinosaur in our Dino Tracker's biggest to smallest collection. Let's get started with the Dino Trackers because those are the newest figures. This first one is the Diablo Ceratops. It's got some crazy horns in the front and some unique dark red coloring. Plus it has an action button on its back to move its head back and forth. This is from the Gigantic Tracker series. This is the Stegosaurus. It's got some pretty bright coloring all over its body. You can see there's all sorts of little specks of different color in there as well. And it comes with this awesome Dino Tracker backpack. And it has two action buttons. One swings the tail up and down, and the other swings the tail back and forth. Next up is another gigantic tracker. This is the Sino Tyrannus. It's got a dark green body with some red detailing on its tail, on its neck, and on its head. It comes with these interesting binocular light type of things. And it has two action buttons on its back. One moves its head, and the other moves its tail. Next up is the Track and Attack Endoraptor. This is one of the newest Endoraptors released. If you pull on its arms, it moves its head. And it has a button on its back to open its mouth. 
check out that awesome reflective blue coloring too. Here we've got the Dryptosaurus from the Dino Trackers series. This figure is mostly darker in colors, but it does have tons of spikes along its body. And it has a dual action button on its back that you can use to move its head back and forth. This is the Chronosaurus from the Dino Trackers series. It is an aquatic dinosaur, so it's got four fins. And this figure also has the dual action button on its back to move its head back and forth. And next up for the Dino Trackers, we have the Austroraptor figure. So this figure is in the same family as a Velociraptor, but you can see it has a much longer and narrower snout. And on this figure, you can adjust the tail, the legs, the arms, the neck, and the mouth. All right, let's check out this new Dino Trackers set that I'm adding to my collection. This is the Search and Smash truck set. Let's first check out this Atrociraptor. It's about the same size as some of the other mini Atrociraptor figures that I have. It's got some pretty unique coloring though. It's got some bright red orange coloring along the front, while the rest of its body is a soft tan color with a little bit of black on the top. And this set actually comes with a tracker that you can put right on to the Atrociraptor. Check that out, it's pretty cool. This set also comes with a soldier who's got a brown vest and also a weapon. And the biggest part of all is this Jeep. And it has a special feature where you can press down on the hood and it'll actually capsize. And next up from the Dino Trackers is the Elephrosaurus. This figure's got some soft blue coloring with some green detailing, and it's got a real mean looking face. All right, moving on to the Roar Attack series. We've got the Baryonyx Chaos figure. This figure has some bright blue detailing along the top of its head and a slide lever action for the sound effects and chomping action. Here is our first Allosaurus figure. This figure has the brown body with the blue detailing along the top, it's got some little spikes running down its spine, and it's got the slide lever action on its back for the roaring and sound effects. Next up from Roar Attack is this Ceratosaurus figure. It's a bit smaller than the Allosaurus figure. It's got the red and black coloring along the top, and of course the slide lever action for the chomping and the roar sound effects. This next figure is actually a Mega Destroyer figure. This is the Carcharodontosaurus. It's got an action button right on its back for the chomping. And you can move its arms, its legs, and its tail too. Here's another Mega Destroyer Carcharodontosaurus. It's pretty much the same aside from this awesome coloring. It's got the blue and the orange and brown, and of course the action button on its back for chomping. Here is the next Roar Attack Allosaurus. This one has the dark green, white, and red. You can move its arms, its legs, and its tail, and it has the slide lever button on its back to activate the sound effects. Here is another Mega Destroyer. This is the Pentaceratops, and this figure is quite large. It's got the soft brown body with the gray detailing and two action buttons. The first moves its head up and down, and the second swivels its entire torso back and forth. And these are probably some of the largest horns that I've seen. This is the Roar Attack Kentrosaurus. It's got spikes all over its body, but the coolest part are these huge spikes coming right out of the side. And you can actually swing those spikes back and forth using this slide lever action. This is the Mega Destroyer Stegosaurus figure with the camouflage green, tan, and brown coloring. And it's got the hidden action button that you can press to swing its entire torso and its tail back and forth. And those are some pretty long spikes too. This is the Ceratosaurus figure with the dark green and black coloring. It's got the tiny little horn on its head and there's a slide lever action for the chomping and sound effects. This one's an interesting looking dinosaur. This is the Oranosaurus from Roar Attack. It's got a huge spine running along its back and a slide lever action on its side to move the head up and down. This next figure is Ankylosaurus Bumpy. It's got the huge shell on its back, the spikes coming off the side, 
and a slide lever action to swing its tail back and forth. And last of all, we've got Baryonyx Limbo in the green, dark green, and brown coloring. You can move its arms, its legs, and its tail, and you can use the slide lever action to open and close its mouth. Started off with this gigantic Giganotosaurus figure. This is one of the largest Giganotosauruses that I currently have. And this figure has some really cool attack features. First is with this button on the top that swings its entire torso back and forth. There's also a button on the bottom of its tail to activate just the jaw by itself. Next, this T-Rex has one of my favorite special features. It actually can break free from its cage that's around its face. By pressing the button on its back, it breaks free and roars at the same time. That is super cool. This dinosaur is our first extreme battle damage dinosaur. This is an Allosaurus and it is part of the Jurassic World Dominion series. You can check out that huge battle damage on the side that you can open up reveal what's underneath and close it up all the way as well. This is a really cool and huge figure. Next, we've got a really interesting T-Rex figure right here. This one is all disassembled. You can see all the insides of this Tyrannosaurus Rex. You can see the muscle of its tail, you can see the intestines, and you can actually lift it up to show even more underneath. Plus, you can actually reassemble it so it looks like a normal T-Rex. I think the legs and the tail are in this bin somewhere, so we'll probably see them in a little bit. Let's check out this other giant T-Rex figure right here. This is Camouflage Custom Colored. And I really like this figure because of the attack features. You can use its tail for a chomping action, chomps downward, or you can lift the tail down and it lifts its head up for a roar. That is super cool, and I think these features make it look really lifelike. Next up, we've got the extreme battle damage Indominus Rex. And it looks like he's chomping on a little Spinosaurus figure. That's pretty cool. But let's check out that extreme battle damage on the side. You can turn it on and turn it off just with the click of a button. Plus, there's a button on its tail for chomping and roaring. This Indominus Rex's arms are huge as well, and check out the size of those claws. Over here, we've got an Albertosaurus figure with extreme battle damage on the side. Plus, it's got some on its skin as well. And just like the Allosaurus that we saw earlier, you can flip down the rib cage, you can see the stomach underneath, or you can close it all completely and hide the battle damage entirely. Next up, we've got a Scorpios Rex figure, and this has some really cool attack features. The first button on its back activates the jaw with sound effects, which is pretty cool, but it also has a second button for the claw slashing action, which I think is really cool. And that's not all. The tail is actually spring-loaded, so you can swing it back and forth to hit other dinosaurs with that poisonous quills. The next special featured dinosaur is this giant Pentaceratops figure. And just like the T-Rex that we saw earlier, it can break free from its cage by pressing a button on its back. Let's check that out. Ready, three, two, one, go! Wow, that is so cool. And there's also a second button to swivel its torso back and forth too. Up next, I've actually just bought this new one to show in this video. This is the Jurassic World Dominion Extreme Damage Atrociraptor. I have quite a few other dinosaurs from this series, so I'm super excited to add a new Atrociraptor to them. So let's check out this battle damage on the side. Check that out. You can reveal it just by the click of a button, and it shows on both sides. Next, we've got another giant T-Rex figure with extreme battle damage on both sides, just like the Atrociraptor that we just saw. You can click it on and off. 
It's really cool. Plus, the rest of its body is fully posable. You can even open its mouth all the way for a giant roar. Up next, we've got an unusual looking dinosaur. This is an Ampelosaurus, and this one has a pretty cool moving feature that's really lifelike, I think. You can use its tail to move its neck around to look in all different directions, plus there's a button to even open and close its jaw, too. So this feature gives this dinosaur some super lifelike movements. Next, we've got a giant Endoraptor figure. This figure has the classic coloring for an Endoraptor. You can use the tail to move the neck and the head around, and even some of the torso, too. And there's two buttons on its tail. The first one moves its arms, and the second button at the bottom of its tail opens and closes its jaw. So you can use all three of these all together to make it look really lifelike. Here is a new Sinoceratops from the Jurassic World Dominion movie. This dinosaur has some really cool coloring, but the special feature is when you press down on its body, it lifts its head up, and it has a ton of sound effects too. Right over here, we've got the Jurassic World Dominion Extreme Battle Damage T-Rex. So this figure is similar to the T-Rex that we saw earlier with the battle damage on its side that you can turn on and off on both sides, but it has entirely different coloring. It's a lot more orange and it has some gray on the top as well. <laughs> Next, looks like we've got a Pteranodon figure. This figure is ginormous. It's probably a foot from wingtip to wingtip and it has two special feature buttons on its back. As you can hear, the first one activates the sound effects and also flaps its wings. And the second button in the front activates its jaw and more sound effects too. I really like how big this figure is, plus you can get some real lifelike wing flapping too. Over here, we've got another Pteranodon figure, but this one is actually from the Hammond collection. And the special feature of this dinosaur is that it is a soft rubbery texture as opposed to a hard plastic like many of the figures. So this figure is really poseable, especially because of that rubber feeling that makes it feel like a real wing would. All right, here are our missing T-Rex parts. So let's actually go ahead and put them on to our T-Rex right here. All right, well, it looks like I'm missing a few pieces here still, but you eventually would be able to reassemble it to make it look entirely like a healthy T-Rex. Next up, we've got the Oranosaurus figure. And the special feature on this dinosaur is this slide lever action that moves its neck and gives a ton of different sound effects. Up next, I've got a little baby Triceratops with the battle damage that you can open and close on the side. Here's also a small Herrerasaurus figure with that same opening and closing battle damage on the side. This, I think, is the first Velociraptor of this bin, and the special feature on this dinosaur is the side-to-side -side slashing action. It is spring-loaded, so you can twist it, and it swings way back and forth. Here's another Herrerasaurus figure, but this figure does not have battle damage, but rather you can use the tail to open and close the mouth. And for how small the figure is, that's a pretty cool feature. And here we've got another Velociraptor figure, but this one has the extreme battle damage on the side that you can turn on and off. And it shows up on both sides too. started with the biggest T-Rex figures. This one is a custom colored super colossal T-Rex. This is one of my most brightly colored T-Rexes. This one is super cool and will be the first on the right side. Over here we've got another super colossal T-Rex. I believe this one is from Camp Cretaceous. It has the bright orange sides with the brown on top and the lighter underbelly. So let's place this on the left side over here. Going back to the right side, let's grab this super colossal Jurassic World Dominion T-Rex. This version of the super colossal T-Rex features some of the darkest coloring that any of my T-Rex figures have. 
And let's put this one on the right side. And for our final super colossal T-Rex is another custom colored one. This one is a light blue gray color all over and has some bright red eyes. I think this figure actually used to be the same color as this one right here. So let's put this figure on the left side to face off. There are our super colossal figures. Now let's move on to the rest of the smaller figures. This T-Rex is the Terran T-Rex. It has a button on its back that you can use for a really cool tearing action. It swings its entire neck around and closes its mouth. And not only that, but it also has a button to swing its tail back and forth too. All right, what team should we put this one on? Let's put it on the right side team. Up next is the Hammond Collection T-Rex. This figure came out pretty recently. It features much more detailed coloring and texturing, plus you can move its body in all sorts of different directions. Now let's put this Hammond Collection T-Rex on the left team. Here is the epic Roarin' T-Rex figure from Camp Cretaceous. This figure is one of my favorite T-Rexes because of its realistic coloring, and it actually has a roar sound effects with vibration. That is battery operated, that's pretty cool. And we're gonna place this one on the right team. For the left team, we're gonna go with the smaller Jurassic World Dominion T-Rex. You can see that compared to the super colossal version, it's actually quite similar with the black on top and the dark brown on the sides and the yellow eyes, but obviously just a whole lot smaller. And we're gonna place this one actually on the left team. This T-Rex is another custom colored Tyrannosaurus Rex figure from Jurassic World. And this one features some really cool camouflage coloring all over its body. And you can even move the tail for a jaw snapping action and for a roaring action too. Now let's put this on the right team for the face off. Now back to our bin, what one should we grab next? Let's go for this bright orange one. This looks to be like a battle damage Tyrannosaurus Rex. It has some painted slashes on its neck and on its chin, as well as on its leg and its torso. And this seems to be a little bit smaller than a lot of these figures. And we're gonna go ahead and put this on the left team. Wow, look at that size difference between this one and the Hammond Collection T-Rex. For the right side, we're gonna go with this other battle damage T-Rex, but instead of painted battle damage, it actually has an activated battle damage slash right there that you can turn on and off. It's also interesting that this figure is a much darker orange than that battle damage T-Rex. And we're gonna put this one on the right team. Next up, we've got a larger T-Rex figure. This is the Stomp and Escape T-Rex. And this T-Rex figure actually came with this cage that you put on its face. And once it's on there, you can actually break free from it. That is really cool. And it's probably one of my favorite features. And we're gonna place this T-Rex on the left team. Right over here is another super brightly custom colored T-Rex figure. This T-Rex is another fiery red color and it actually has very similar design to this super colossal T-Rex right over here. You can see all those similarities. And now we're actually gonna place them on the same team on the right side. <laughs> All right, the time has come. We are gonna check out this new custom colored T-Rex that I ordered, and I actually haven't seen it yet. You can see the tip of the tail right there, so let's go ahead and pull it out. And here it is. All right, it is another custom colored camouflage T-Rex. That is super cool. It's got the bright green on the sides and then brown and black and tan all over the rest of its body. And this one looks to be actually a battle damage T-Rex like this bright orange one right over here. And look at that, you can actually turn the battle damage on and off still. And actually this figure seems to be pretty similar in color to this older custom colored camouflage T-Rex. Look at that, they're pretty similar. They both have a lot of the same colors. This is really cool. And instead of having them on the same team, I'm actually gonna put this one on the left team over here so they can face off against each other. Our next figure in this T-Rex versus T-Rex collection is this dark green T-Rex. And this one was actually not custom colored. This is how it came. And comparing the two colors, the custom colored green is a lot brighter than this green. And this T-Rex still has the button on the top of its head for the chomping action. Now let's put this T-Rex on the right team. Let's keep going here. Let's grab this one next. Here is another very natural colored T-Rex. Looks like it's a light gray color on the sides and dark brown on the top. 
I bet that this T-Rex would blend into rocks or a mountainside really well. Its body is fully posable and it has the button at the top of its head for the chomping action. And this T-Rex is gonna go over on the left team. I've got at least one more bright orange T-Rex figure. This figure is a little bit older. I think it might be from the Fallen Kingdom era. And like that super colossal figure in the back there, it has the bright orange body with the brown on top and it features the chomping button. Let's move it on over to the right team. Here's another crazy looking custom colored T-Rex. And this figure is actually quite old. I believe it's from the first Jurassic World movie. I believe that this figure used to be a tan color, actually just like this figure right here. These two figures are basically identical other than the coloring, of course. And they both got a button on the top of their back for a chomping action, although they don't work too well anymore. Now let's put them on opposing sides. The custom colored T-Rex is gonna go on the left team, and the original tan T-Rex is gonna go on the right team. I've actually got one more T-Rex figure from that same era. This figure is basically the exact same size, although it has different coloring, and this is actually how it came too. So it has the dark green on the body, but it has some reflective gold along the top, and then this interesting design running along its neck and its side too. But coolest of all, it actually has some hidden spikes on its back and its head, so that when you press the chomping action, its spikes spring out too. Now what side should this T-Rex go on? Let's say, let's have it go on the right team. Coming up next, we've got a smaller T-Rex figure, and this is actually a model T-Rex that wasn't made by Hasbro or Mattel. It features some brown coloring with the black stripes, and since it's a model, you can't actually move any body parts. And let's put this figure on the left team. This next figure is another model T-Rex, and it has some kind of tiger-like coloring with the orange-yellow body and then those black stripes right on top of that. Let's put this T-Rex model on the right team. Got a few more model T-Rexes in here. This one is a dark green with black striping, and on this model T-Rex, you can actually open and close its jaws. Now let's put this one on the left team right there. And here is one more model T-Rex figure. This one is also brown and black, pretty similar to this T-Rex right here, but it is quite a bit smaller, and on this figure, you can actually open and close its jaw too. Now let's have it go on the right team. Next, let's check out some Lego T-Rex figures. This first one is brown and bright orange. It features a fully posable body and a huge jaw. And this one's gonna go to the left team. Now let's grab that other Lego T-Rex figure that I have in here. This one is a lot darker brown. You can check out the color difference between the two right there. But in shape and size, they're pretty similar. Although I will point out that this one has white teeth and the teeth on this figure are not colored at all. But nevertheless, let's set this one on the right team. And we're back to the figures made by Mattel. This is the Sound Surge Tyrannosaurus Rex figure. It's smaller than many of these other figures in here, but it has a button on the top of its back to activate the sound effects. Let's see if we have any more room for this T-Rex here. Now here's a wacky looking T-Rex figure. This is a Gujitsu Tyrannosaurus Rex, and it is actually licensed by Jurassic World, so this is an official figure. And the feature of this figure is that it's got a super squishy and super stretchy body. Check out this crazy stretching. All right, now I don't know that this figure is actually gonna stand up, but we're gonna place it on the left team here. I've also got a Funko Pop figure in here. This one is from Jurassic World Dominion. And I really like the all black eyes on this figure. Makes it look really scary. And we're gonna place this on the right team. Right here are some older figures. I believe once again from the first Jurassic World movie. This super bright one is actually a hybrid T-Rex. It is a hybrid with a Dilophosaurus. And it's got the bright neon orange and the reflective gold coloring on its body. So this one is pretty special. So let's Let's place that on the left team right here and check out this other one that is very similar size but not a hybrid T-Rex. So this is the original version and it's got a little bit of battle damage right on the side. And let's place this right in front of the hybrid T-Rex on the right team. 
And finally, I've got some tiny T-Rex figures in here. Let's check all of these out. Looks like there's a couple of Snap Squad figures in here. This first Snap Squad T-Rex is in the brown orange coloring with the dark brown on the top. And let's place this on the right side. And then there's also this dark green Snap Squad T-Rex. And I think this T-Rex figure is actually pretty similar in color and design as this one way back there. Look at that, they're basically the same green color. Now let's put this one on the left side here. And for our final two, we've got this crazy looking T-Rex figure. This one's qu also quite a bit old, so the chomping action doesn't work anymore, sadly. But we'll go ahead and put it on the right team. And then finally, this miniature Tyrannosaurus Rex figure. It is all brown, although its eyes look to be painted black, which is a nice detail. And the underbelly is also painted a lighter tan color. And let's finally put this T-Rex on the left team. And so here is our entire versus battle. We've got the left team of T-Rexes over here versus the right team. Which side do you think would win in a battle? Let me know in the comments below. First, let's check out these super colossal figures. This is Velociraptor Blue in this super colossal form. It's got the iconic blue stripe and the classic raptor teeth. Right next to that is an Atrociraptor figure from Jurassic World Dominion. It's colored white and it has some brown striping on its body and some very similar teeth. And the last super colossal raptor is this new Endoraptor figure and it is one of my favorites for sure. Like Velociraptor Blue, it has a stripe down its side but it is a gold stripe and I really love how different its teeth are compared to the other raptors. Moving over to the T-Rex side. This is the super colossal T-Rex from Jurassic World Dominion. It has the brown colored body and totally different teeth compared to the raptors. Right next to that is a custom colored T-Rex that I've had for a really long time. It is a light blue gray color. It has some dark red eyes and some sharper teeth, I think compared to the Dominion T-Rex. And finally, there is another custom colored T-Rex here. This one is the Fire T-Rex. It's got red, yellow, and black all over its body. Its eyes actually do not have any pupils. And overall, it's just a really cool looking dinosaur. And now let's check out these new sets that I got. This first one is the Jurassic World Legacy Collection Tyrannosaurus Ambush Pack. Here is the Jeep that comes in this set. It is a camo Jeep. It's got the barricaded windows. And at the top is Dr. Ian Malcolm. But even better than that is this new T-Rex with new painting. I don't have another T-Rex with this color design on it. Looks to be mostly a dark green color. It has some gray and yellow accenting on the top of its back. And of course, it has the button at the top of its head for chopping and roaring. Now let's check out the new Dino Trackers Tyrannosaurus Rex figure. And here it is, an entirely new T-Rex figure in my collection. Once again, this one has totally new coloring. It's got some brown striping with an almost yellow color along the top. And it has this headpiece that you can fit it onto its face. And now it's kind of like an eyepiece or something like that. And this figure actually has a new attack button on its back. Let's check it out. So it's like a sideways chomping action with sound effects. That's pretty cool. Now let's get these new T-Rex figures set up on the T-Rex side. And now let's move on to our next figures. So next we're gonna grab a raptor. Why don't we go with the largest one here? This is a Pyroraptor figure. And this one's pretty special because it actually is battery powered and you can actually play with it and it walks around and stuff. So let me turn on the power and let's see it. You can tap it on the head here and it'll respond to you or underneath the chin as well. Uh, 
That's a pretty cool and pretty unique figure. We're gonna set it over here on the raptor side. Now it's back to the T-Rexes. Let's check out this epic roaring T-Rex from Camp Cretaceous. This figure is a little bit larger than the other T-Rexes that I've shown so far. And it has an attack button on its tail for roaring and chopping and moving the head around. And let's get this T-Rex on the T-Rex side right there. Back to the Raptors, let's go with this awesome Endoraptor figure. As you can tell, this figure is way smaller than the super colossal Endoraptor figure, but I'm still a pretty big fan of it. It's got this cool blue reflective coloring over its entire body. So let's go ahead and set it up underneath the super colossal raptors. Next up for the T-Rexes, I've got the new 93 Tyrannosaurus Rex figure. This figure was released as part of the 30th anniversary for Jurassic Park and looks very similar to the vintage one that they released all those years ago. It's even got the real feel skin texture too. Now let's set it up to face off against the raptors on the T-Rex side. Let's see, what raptor should we go with next? Why don't we go with this Velociraptor blue figure? This is another pretty unique Velociraptor figure. You can see that it's built quite a bit differently and it has these really cool movements. First, it has a snapping action with sound effects. You can move its tail around, you can move its legs and really make it look super lifelike. It's really cool. And so let's set this over on the raptor side, right underneath the super colossal Endoraptor. For the T-Rexes, I've got a classic brown T-Rex figure. This figure features a fully posable body and the button at the top of its head for snapping its jaw open and closed. And so let's set this over here, right underneath this Dominion super colossal figure. Next, let's grab this Mega Raptor figure. This figure was released for Jurassic World Dominion. It features some really cool red and dark blue coloring. It has a ton of cool spikes on its back and a chomping action. And let's set it up right over here, right in front of the little Indoraptor. Next, let's go with a huge Tyrannosaurus Rex figure. This is the Stomp and Escape T-Rex. And I think this figure is a little bit larger than almost all of these other T-Rex figures. It has a much larger torso, and it actually has a button on its back used for a huge roaring and chomping action. All right, now let's see if we can get this T-Rex lined up on the T-Rex side. Looks like he's standing a little closer to the raptors. For the raptors, let's grab this Amber Collection Velociraptor figure. These Amber Collection figures are really cool because of their unique coloring and because of how poseable they are. You can move practically every limb in this raptor as it would in real life. And now we're gonna set this right back here for the raptor side. And back for the T-Rexes, let's grab this fiery red T-Rex. This T-Rex also has the yellow, black, and red coloring, very similar to the super colossal figure right here, but it's a bit more reflective and shiny overall. And it features a fully posable body and the button at the top of its head for chomping. And we're gonna set this one right next to the other fire T-Rex, right above it. Now let's grab this other Velociraptor blue figure. Looks like we have three Velociraptor blues in this collection so far. We first had the super colossal version, then we had this little one over here, and now here is, I believe, the smallest version in this collection. Now this figure is a basic version, so it's a bit cheaper than many of these other figures, but it doesn't have an attack button. You can only move its tail, its legs, and its arm. But overall, still pretty cool. And now let's set this in line over on the raptor side here. This next T-Rex here is another Legacy Collection T-Rex, I believe. So here is the older Legacy Collection, and here is the newer version that we just opened up at the beginning of the video. And this version too has some dark green coloring, although it just has some black striping on the top of its body, but it still has the button on its head for chomping and roaring. Now, why don't we go ahead and set it up right in front of the other Legacy Collection T-Rex. So we got the two green T-Rexes 
right next to each other. Here's another basic figure for the raptor side. This is a pyroraptor from Jurassic World Dominion. Now it's pretty similar in shape and size to the Velociraptor blue figure that we saw earlier from the basic series, but it has some pretty cool feather texturing on its arms, on its body, and on the top of its head too. So let's go ahead and set this up right next to the Velociraptor blue figure. Here is the Terran T-Rex figure. This one is a massive Tyrannosaurus Rex. It still has the classic brown coloring on its body, but it has two big action buttons on its back. The first operates the huge Terran action. Check that out, it twists its whole neck and chomps its jaw shut. And the second button swings the tail back and forth. Could probably knock out some raptors with that swing. All right, let's see if we've got more space for this Terran T-Rex. It's getting pretty cramped over here on the T-Rex side. This next raptor is a quite old Velociraptor figure from the first Jurassic World movie. This figure was actually made by Hasbro instead of Mattel, who made many of these newer figures over here. And you know, overall, it's a pretty basic figure. You can only move the legs and the arms a little bit, but sadly, there's no chomping or attack action. But nonetheless, we'll still set it up right over here here on the raptor side. Here we've got a battle damage T-Rex figure. This T-Rex comes in the orange brown coloring and you can see that it has battle damage painted all over its body and even some on its face. Plus it has the button for chomping and roaring at the top of its head. Uh, let's see, oh boy, where are we gonna fit this T-Rex? And we can put him right up front, right here. For the Velociraptor side, we're gonna go with this basic Atrociraptor figure. This figure is much like the other basic figures that we saw in that you can move its tail, its legs, and its arms, but it doesn't have any actions. But it's still a pretty cool piece. I love the bright red eyes, and it has similar painting to the super colossal Atrociraptor that I've got right up there. And we'll go ahead and put this Atrociraptor right next to the other basic raptor figures. Now here is another super old Jurassic World figure, I believe from the first movie once again. Which means that this figure I believe was made by Hasbro instead of Mattel, and this whole T-Rex was actually custom colored as well. So let's put this little T-Rex right in here. I think we've got a little space back here. There we go. And here are all the final figures for this collection. So I'm just gonna bring them all over here in a pile. Let's first get this Amber Collection Velociraptor set up. It has some really cool teal coloring with spots all over and just like all the other Amber Collection, is super poseable. And let's place it down right here at the edge of the line. Let's set up a few more Raptors over here while we're at it. Here is a smaller gray and yellow Velociraptor. It's very small, so there's no action button, but it's still pretty poseable. And we're gonna place this right over here. Next is this red and green Velociraptor, and it has spring-loaded legs, so you can actually press down and send it flying into the air. And we'll set that one up right here. Now I've got two more Velociraptors right here. This one is the newer one. I believe it's part of the Dino Tracker series and it actually does have an attack button for moving its head up and down. And we're gonna set this one back here. And then this Velociraptor is a more clay red or kind of a brown color. And it is a battle damage edition Atrociraptor. So you can see a button right there and the battle damage on its side you can click on and off. And we're gonna set this raptor up right over here on the edge of the line. But let's not forget our last and smallest T-Rex of the collection. This is the Sound Surge T-Rex, and it has the classic brown coloring all over its body with some gray detailing on the top of its head. And of course, the sound effects that you can turn on with the button. And so finally, let's place this on the T-Rex side right in front of the Velociraptors. And that is the full collection. Which side do you think would win in a battle? The Raptors or the T-Rexes? Let me know in the comments below. unusual species is this Eo Carcaria figure from the new Dino Tracker series. It's got a fantastic feathering texture over its whole body and a single lever action on its back for the chomping and roaring. 
Next up is the mighty Yang Chuanasaurus figure. This has the green and brown coloring, and you can use the tail to control the head and open and close the jaw. Here is the Irritator Dinosaur, and I think it's from the Dino Tracker series. This figure has some really cool coloring, and that same action button on its back for the chomping and roaring. <laughs> Next up is this huge Quetzalcoatlus figure. If you're a big fan of the movies, you might remember this species in the Jurassic World Dominion movie. And it's got one button on its back for flapping its wings and another button for moving its neck up and down and opening and closing its jaws. Right over here, I've got the Siamosaurus figure. This dinosaur walks on all four legs and you can use the tail to move the head around and open and close the jaw. Next is a little bit of an older figure. This is a Concavenator figure. It's got this huge hump on its back that's red and purple and its entire face is purple and there's an action button on its back for a chomping action and you can press on its spike to swing its tail back and forth this aquatic dinosaur is called the elasmosaurus it's got a soft blue body which i bet camouflages really well in the water and it has two action buttons on its back one swings its neck side to side and the other moves its neck up and down here is the Proceratosaurus figure. This is the basic edition, so you can move its tail, its legs, and its arm, but sadly there is no action button. Still has some pretty cool coloring though. Next up is the Sucomimus figure. This version is in the yellow and brown, and it has two buttons on its back, one for chomping its jaw, and the other for swinging its tail. And I've actually got the other Sucomimus figure in here. This one is in the blue and yellow coloring. And this figure actually only has one action button, and that is for the chomping action. Check out this crazy looking figure. This is a Diabloceratops from the new Dino Tracker series. It's got the all red body, some gigantic horns on its head. It's got some sound effects and the lever on its back for the action. Here's a slightly smaller dinosaur, but still pretty scary looking. This is the Majingasaurus dinosaur with the green, yellow, and blue coloring. And while you have to open and close its mouth manually on this figure, you can still use the tail to control the neck and the head. This next figure is from the new Dino Tracker series. This is the Orca Raptor figure. It has some feather texturing on part of its body. It also has these massive claws on its front arms. And just like all the other Dino Tracker figures, has this lever on its back for the roaring and the chomping action. Next up, I've got an Albertosaurus figure in the green and orange coloring. And with this figure, you can move the tail around to twist the neck back and forth and to chomp the jaw. This next uncommon species is a crazy looking carnivore figure. This is a Tarbosaurus. Check out that red underneath its chin and all these huge spikes running down its back. Plus, you can use the tail to twist the neck around and open and close the jaw. This next figure is also quite large. This species is called a Siats Micorerum. It has the orange coloring on the sides and underbelly and the dark blue on top with all these rows of spikes on its head and on its back. And of course, its special feature is that you can use the tail to twist the neck around and open and close its jaw. Check out those really cool teeth. Next up is an herbivore figure. This is a Cynoceratops figure. And this version comes in the soft green coloring with some tan detailing and dark orange. And with this Cynoceratops figure, you can use the tail to move its head around in all sorts of directions. Check it out, it's another herbivore figure. This uncommon species is called an Oranosaurus. It has a huge spine running along the top of its back and some really cool coloring. It's got the green on its body, bright yellow, orange, and even some blue on its face. And it has this action button on its side for moving its head and sound effects. Right over here, I've got the Ampelosaurus figure. Now this one is a bit older of a figure, but it's still pretty uncommon of a species. And it has two action buttons on its back. The first moves its head up and down, and the second button activates its tail for swinging back and forth. All right, here's another carnivore. This is a Cryolophosaurus figure, and this version is the yellow one with the brown coloring and the huge crown on the top of its head. And with this figure, although you have to open and close its mouth manually, you can still use the tail to move its neck around. This next four-legged dinosaur is called a Nigersaurus. It's got the two tones of green on its body. And since it's from the Dino Tracker series, it has this special feature button on its back used for moving its head in all sorts of directions. This next uncommon species is called a Dryptosaurus figure, also from the new Dino Tracker series. It's got more dark coloring over most of its body and it's got spikes all over on its head, on its back, and a bunch on its tail as well. And it's got the action button on its back for chomping and sound effects. 
This next figure is called the Gigant Spinosaurus Dinosaur. It looks kind of like a Stegosaurus because it has those frills on its back, but it also has these huge spines coming out of its shoulder too. And it is actually spring-loaded so that when you move the head back and forth, it actually swings the tail back and forth too. Next up, I've got the Piatnitskisaurus. It's got some pretty cool blue coloring over its whole body and also some red, some orange, and some light green. Next up is the Nothosaurus Dinosaur. It's a pretty weird looking species She's got some short legs and a really long neck and narrow snout. Here is the Shringosaurus dinosaur in the yellow and brown coloring. It walks on all four legs and it has this massive pair of horns on the top of its head. Next up is the Austroraptor dinosaur figure. It comes in the tan and brown coloring and has a bit of dark orange along the top of its head and it has a really long and narrow snout. Next up is a Herrerasaurus, which you might have heard before, but this is actually a pretty new figure and looks quite a bit different compared to the old version. Plus, it has an action button on its back for a chomping motion. This is the Geniodecti Cirrus figure. This version comes in the dark brown and yellow coloring, and it also has an action button on its back for opening and closing its jaw. Here is another aquatic dinosaur. This one is called the Tanistrophius figure. It's got some short little legs that you can adjust and a bright blue body. And when you move the tail up and down, it actually swings its neck way down to the bottom. Now here's a crazy looking dinosaur. This uncommon species is called a Scutosaurus. It's got a bright orange body and it walks on all fours and check out these huge horns underneath its chin. I've got a few more winged dinosaurs in here. This species is called Ramphorhynchus. It's got some bright yellow green wings and a bunch of crazy looking teeth in its mouth. This next dinosaur species is called the Zungdaripteris. It's got bright yellow wings and a brown body and you can actually see feather texture all over its wings too. Plus, it's got a pretty unique looking face and jaw. Next up is a Draco Rex figure. This one is colored bright green with some gray striping and check out all those horns on the back of its head. Oh, you know what? I've got another winged dinosaur in here. This one is called the Tapehara. It's got a lot of orange and some green on its body, but the coolest part is this face. Check that out. Plus, there's a button on its back to flap its wings. The next dinosaur is an Elaphrosaurus figure. It comes in the blue coloring with some yellow and dark brown detailing. Check out those huge horns on the top of its head. Here is the extreme battle damage Quilmosaurus figure. It has the light green body with the dark green on top and the bright red chin. And check out that battle damage on the side that you can click on and off. All right, I've got another aquatic dinosaur. This one is called the Plesiosaurus. It's got a dark green body with the white underneath, also to camouflage in the ocean, and a single action button on its back to move its fins. This next uncommon figure is the Masiakasaurus dinosaur. It has the dark red body with the yellow spotting all over, and spotting is pretty unusual for these dinosaur figures, and the single action button on its back for chomping its jaw. This is the Rugops Primus figure. It has some feather texturing over its body and a soft green coloring on its body with the black on its tail and on its face. Here is the Mira Gaia figure. This figure looks quite a bit like a Stegosaurus, but this one also has the huge spikes coming out of its shoulders and a lot more spikes on its tail too. And here is a Patchy Cephalosaurus figure. I believe this one is from the Legacy Collection. And this figure has a special feature that when you press down on its tail, it has the headbutting action. This little dinosaur here is called a Trudon. It has the pink underbelly and gray on the sides and the black spine and the black along the top of its head too. Next up is the Protoceratops figure. There's a few versions of this and this one is in the bright green with yellow accenting. This figure I believe is called the Sauropelta. It has some huge spikes coming out of its shoulders and is actually spring loaded so you can swing its shoulders back and forth with those huge spikes. Here's a crazy looking figure. This is actually a hybrid dinosaur from the first Jurassic World movie. This is a Triceratops and Stegosaurus hybrid. Check out that battle damage right on the side too. And it even has an action button. When you press down its tail, you get a stabbing action with its head. And last of all, I've got the Zunoceratops figure. This is a newer version that is in the brown coloring with the tan and black on its face. And it has a single action button for a stabbing action.
This first figure, however, is not from Dino Trackers. This is actually part of the 30th anniversary Jurassic Park collection. This is the real feel T-Rex figure designed to look like the old Jurassic Park one. The skin on its body is soft and rubbery, and it actually can eat smaller dinosaurs and store them in its stomach compartment. Next up is the Dino Trackers Endoraptor figure. This version is slightly larger than many of my other Endoraptor figures, and it has some roaring actions with its arms. And it has an action button on its back, too. Here is the epic attack Carnotaurus figure. It's around the same size as many of my other Carnotaurus figures, and it features the red body with the brown top and a single action button on its back to operate its job. But best of all, there's these action buttons on its side for more sound effects and lights, too. Here is the Dino Trackers Diabloceratops figure. It comes in the bright red coloring over all its body and has some massive horns, and it has an action on its back to swing its head back and forth. Next up is the Dino Trackers Sino Tyrannus figure. It comes with this cool headset that you can take off of the dinosaur figure, and it has some pretty cool coloring, and it has two buttons. One activates its head, and the other button activates its tail. Right over here is the Dino Trackers Eocarcharia. This dinosaur has feather texturing over all its body. It's got some pretty bright coloring and the bright red along its face and an action on its back to swing its head back and forth. This is the Gigantic Trackers Stegosaurus figure. It has some really cool coloring over all of its body. It's quite different from all the other Stegosaurus figures that I have. And of course it comes with the Tracker backpack and two action buttons on its back. One swings its tail up and down and the other swings it side to side. Here is the Dino Trackers Nigersaurus figure. This dinosaur stands on all four legs and has some pretty bright green on the front and darker green in the back. And there's one single action button on its back to move its head back and forth. Here's our first aquatic dinosaur of the collection. This is the Chronosaurus. It has the dark blue top and the yellow underbelly, and you can adjust all its fins and its tail too. And it has a single action on its back to operate its jaw. Next up is the Adaphosaurus figure. It looks pretty similar to a Dimetrodon with a huge spine on its back and standing on all four legs, but its spine is even a bit larger than a Dimetrodon's. And with this figure, you can use the tail to move the head back and forth. All right, now it's time for some ones that I haven't even opened up yet. This is the Orcoraptor figure. This is a pretty bulky looking figure. You can see that it has some feather texturing along the underside of its body, but not really along the top. You can tell that it's kind of a skin texture. And kind of like the Therizinosaurus, it has these huge claws on its hands. It's got some pretty bright accenting design on its tail, but not really anywhere else, which is interesting. But there is some right around its eyes too. And it looks like the arms, the legs, and the tail are adjustable. And there's an action button on its back to operate its jaw. Next up of the unopened figures is this Irritator figure. I think I have one or two other Irritator figures, so I'm excited to add this to my collection. All right, here it is. And I gotta say, it looks even a bit different compared to my other Irritator figures. Its legs seem to be a lot shorter, whereas its body is super long. It has this really long tail. And of course, it still has the spine that runs from its back down its tail and it has some pretty cool coloring too, with the dark brown in the back and on its legs, the orange in the middle, and then some bright green along its head and its neck too. And it looks like its arms and its legs and its tail are adjustable. And there's that single action button on its back to operate its jaw. <laughs> And the next unopened figure is this Regalus Ceratops. Let's go ahead and open it up and check it out. So obviously it looks quite a bit like a Triceratops. It stands on all four legs. It's got the horns on the front, as well as these additional horns along the top of its frill. And it's even got some spikes running down its back and its tail too. This is a pretty bright dinosaur as well. Most of it is that yellow color. It has some green along its face and along its back. And it looks like all four legs are adjustable. You can twist the tail around a bit. And it has an action button on its back for roar sound effects. 
Up next is the Dino Tracker's Dryptosaurus figure. It has fairly dark coloring with the dark brown over most of its body and then the green accenting on its arms and on its tail as well. And boy, does this figure have tons of spikes along its body. And there's the action button to control the jaw and the sound effects. Over here is the Hammond Collection Baryonyx figure. It features a fully poseable body on all of its limbs and has the classic blue coloring with the white stripe and the gray underbelly. Here's another Hammond Collection figure. This is the Concavenator. It too has a fully poseable body with all of its limbs and it features some pretty cool coloring with some bright orange along parts of it, the dark blue, the lighter underbelly, and some cool detailing around its eyes. Here is the Dino Tracker's Zunaceratops figure. This version of the Zunaceratops has the brown body with some tan and black along its neck and an action button to activate its head. This next Dino Tracker's figure, I believe, is called the Elephrosaurus. It features a bright blue body with some yellow accenting along the side and a darker face with some horns on the top. And it looks like its whole body is adjustable as well. The arms, the legs, the tail, the neck, and the jaw. Here is the Dino Tracker's Herrerasaurus figure. And this Herrerasaurus looks quite a bit different compared to the older versions by Jurassic World. It features posable arms, legs, and tail and an action button on its back for the chomping. This next figure is the Dino Tracker's Ostroraptor. This version features the tan body with some brown detailing and some brighter coloring around its head. And overall, it's shaped like a Velociraptor, but the biggest difference is the shape of its head and its jaw. Here is the Dino Tracker's Strike Attack Gigant Spinosaurus. This figure looks kind of like a Miragaya with these spines along its back and the huge spikes coming out of its shoulders, but it has a different shaped head and this one has the orange coloring in the front and the tan in the back. Plus it has an action that when you move its head back and forth, it moves its tail too. Next up is the Dino Tracker Strike Attack Dilophosaurus figure. This figure has very muted colors. It only has white, some black as well, and I think that's pretty much it. But it still has this really cool feature that when you move its tail, it activates its frills. <laughs> Now here is the Hammond Collection Dilophosaurus figure. It looks quite a bit different compared to the Strike Attack figure that we just saw. But this figure is actually pretty cool because you can actually remove the frill to reveal just the head by itself. Which apparently is a more realistic look for the Dilophosaurus in real life. Back here is the Hammond Collection Ceratosaurus figure. It features the fully poseable body, has some pretty cool coloring over its whole body, and of course has the little horn on the top of its head. Here is the Dino Tracker's baby Brachiosaurus figure. I have a few other versions of this figure, and this one is in the brown coloring with the tan accenting along its back. Here is the Epic Attack Dilophosaurus figure, a little bit larger than many of my other Dilophosauruses. And interestingly, on this figure, you can't move the frills at all, but there is this action button on its side to activate some sounds and some light effects. Looks like here's another Zunaceratops figure from Dino Trackers. We've seen this one already. This one from Dino Trackers, I believe, is called Geniodectes Cirrus. Features some bright coloring with the yellow that runs from its tail through its underbelly up to its face, and then the brown along the rest of its body. And it has an action button on its back to operate the jaw. Next up is a miniature Hammond Collection Velociraptor figure. It of course is extremely poseable all over its body. It has a single stripe that runs down its entire side and it's got some cool blue coloring right around its eyes too. And finally, here is the Dino Tracker's Strike Attack Atrociraptor figure. This Atrociraptor has some bright yellow along the front and then the back is a dark green color. It's also got some reflective silver coloring right around its eyes and a single action button on its back to operate its head.
Want to see more dino videos? Click the subscribe button now.